What is unique in this model is that there's a framework of interaction between all of those disciplines that allows each of those disciplines then to interact directly with the patient, both in terms of assessment and in terms of making recommendations for treatment. The net result um, is a, um, a wide variety of resources available to patients and at the same time a very well integrated clinical approach from all of these care providers working together as a single team. Um, on your um, agenda, you may have noticed that uh, Sharon Day, our Director of Nutrition, was originally scheduled to uh, present here today. Um, she was unable to make it, but she did ask me to talk about nutrition a little bit, so I'm going to talk about it very briefly. Um, as you probably know, in 1971, President, um, <coughs> excuse me, President Nixon um, instituted the war on cancer. Um, and one of the outcomes of that was a really strong look at some of the issues related to um, the causative effects of cancer. And as you know, um, there are a lot of things that increase risk for cancer, specifically things that increase risk for multiple myeloma. Um, and we know, for example, that gender and ethnicity um, and diet um, play a role in the risk factors. Um, none of us can change our gender, at least not in terms of our DNA. And we can't change our ethnicity, but what we can affect is our diet. And these are some of the um, American Institute for Cancer Research recommendations related to dietary interventions. Um, choosing a plant-based diet, meaning that the primary things on your plate when you eat come from plants and not from animals. Maintaining a healthy body mass index, a healthy weight. Uh, maintaining a high level of physical activity, five or more servings of fruits and vegetables a day seven or more servings of grains and legumes a day, avoiding or limiting alcohol, red meat and salt, limiting fat intake um, to a fairly low level of 15 to 30 percent of, of calories total, um, minimize the use of additives and preservatives, and then minimize the use of, of charred um, or cured or smoked meats. Um, general, frankly, common sense nutritional um, approaches that, in fact, make a huge difference in terms of cancer risk. Um, the estimates have been that somewhere between 30 and 35 percent of all cancer incidents in the United States can be traced to dietary issues, and that's a huge percentage. If I, were, if I was a drug salesman standing up here talking about having a drug that could reduce the risk of cancer by 35 percent, people would be beating a path to my door. I could charge anything I wanted for that drug, right? You know, and yet simple, common sense dietary guidelines can have that same impact, and yet we continually um, ignore them. Or we all, we give them, we give them um, a nod, and we acknowledge that there's some benefit there, and then go out and continue to um, eat the way we've always eaten. We stop by McDonald's, and we get the Big Mac, and we have the Diet Coke and the fries. <clears throat> Um, so as I said, we know that there are some diet risk factors. The, the data is most convincing for things like obesity, alcohol intake, and a low intake of fruits and vegetables. But there is good data looking at um, calcium and vitamin D levels as probable risk factors, um, as well as um, processing in meats. Um, a new study just came out, I believe in the New England Journal of Medicine in the last 10 days, that looked at correlation between increased red meat consumption and overall death, and death from cardiovascular disease, and death from cancer. Um, so it's, it's really clear um, that lowering our consumption of meat products in general um, is a healthy choice. Um, I did want to talk just really briefly about some integrative oncology practice guidelines that are available. Um, a new um, organization was formed um, about um, six or seven years ago called the Society for Integrative Oncology, formed um, by clinicians and researchers from some of the major cancer centers in the United States. And in 2007, um, in the Journal of the Society for Clinical or for Integrative Oncology, um, these um, practice guidelines were published. They're actually in the process of being reviewed, and probably later in 2009, we'll have an updated um, set of guidelines. But I wanted to just um, run through a couple of these. There's 17 recommendations overall in this article, and, uh, and we don't have time to talk about all of them. But I thought I would just share a couple of them with you so that you can understand kind of the, the current state of the recommendations. By the way, um, this is not a panel made up of acupuncturists, massage therapists, 
nutritionists and naturopathic physicians. Um, the people who um, were the primary authors on this are from Memorial Sloan Kettering, Kettering Cancer Center, MD Anderson Cancer Center, Emory University, Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida, um, University of California at San Francisco, um, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, uh, the Jovaninsky Cancer Institute in Canada, uh, University of Texas. So um, major um, cancer centers, major medical institutions. Um, one of the recommendations is all patients with cancer should be asked specifically about the use of complementary and alternative therapies. Even today in 2009, my patients tell me that frequently they are not asked um, by their healthcare providers what they are taking in terms of vitamins and minerals and herbal products, what they're doing in terms of massage or mind-body medicine, or whether they're seeing an acupuncturist or a chiropractor. The history isn't even being taken. Second recommendation is um, that the patients should receive information and guidance about the use of these kinds of therapies in an open, evidence-based, and patient-centered manner by a qualified professional. Um, third, mind-body modalities are recommended as part of a multidisciplinary approach to reduce anxiety, mood disturbance, chronic pain, and to improve quality of life. Mind-body modalities such as relaxation techniques, um, support groups, um, counseling, other kinds of techniques like biofeedback, um, individual psychotherapy, all very, very appropriate. Recommendation number seven from this group was that acupuncture is recommended um, when pain is poorly controlled, and number nine, another acupuncture recommendation, when nausea and vomiting associated with chemotherapy or anesthesia are poorly controlled, or when there are other kinds of side effects um, that are not responding um, and are clinically impacting the patient. Um, recommendation number 14, um, I like, um, recommended that dietary supplements, herbal products, vitamins and minerals be evaluated for side effects, poten potential interaction, and that those things that are likely to interact shouldn't be used concurrently with conventional treatments. Number 15, recommended patients be referred to registered dietitians for guidelines on usual diets to promote basic health. Number 16, um, cancer patients who either fail um, or are um, choosing not to use conventional therapies, that um, things like botanicals be used either in the context of clinical trials, recognized um, guidelines, or based on clinical evaluation of the risk-benefit ratio, and that um, referral to qualified experts such as doctors of naturopathic medicine or board certified in naturopathic oncology may be considered. I did not write this recommendation. I was not part of the panel, by the way. Um, the, the point of, of really talking about all of these issues it's just to give you a sense that um, over the last, particularly five or six years, there's been an increasing awareness of the importance of these kinds of approaches and an attempt on every level to provide um, resources and um, methods that patients can use to help to manage their disease. Um, we continue to see um, on an almost daily basis um, enhancements and progression in our ability to treat cancer effectively. And yet, every single one of you in this room know that we do not treat cancer as effectively as we want to. And certainly that is true with a disease like multiple myeloma. So cancer patients are understandably looking for anything that they can do that may benefit them in their struggle with this disease. And our goal really is to provide those resources, but to do it in a medically uh, responsible manner and in a way that's gonna optimize the outcome considering all of the therapies that the patient is on. Um, I'm going to stop at this point. Um, uh, we are going to take uh, questions, I think, at the end, and I'll just uh, turn this over to Dr. Sean Bertzel.